I married a guy I knew most of my life. We knew each other in high school and even went to prom together. But little did I know, I did not know him at all. I will call my now ex-husband, Dirty Chad. Hey y'all, this is April. And this is Caroline. With Bloody Happy Hour. And we are bringing to you Dirty Chad. Get it on patreon.com slash bloody happy hour exclusively for all the details and all the red flags. Caroline's finally telling her story. My truth. Benjamin Bet. It's all about the Benjamin Betts, baby. You know what's up? You said Benjamin Betts, baby. Uh. (laughs) Well, welcome back, everybody, to Benjamin Betts, the show where we make bets and all of the winnings go to charity. I am Jared Dauenhauer, and with me always is my co-host, Corey Dickman. And Corey, we should have gone 06 this week, and uh, it felt like we went 06 this week in our bets. I know the mortgage didn't go well. We can talk about that later, but somehow we escaped this week at 500. Yeah, you know, we, we, we need to be honest with our with our listeners. You know, we, we want them to lay their money with us so they can win money. Charity wins money. But man, it was looking very grim. I, I was going to feel very bad for all the people that followed us when we were starting the day out 0 and 3. And and it honestly wasn't even close. Like we had Bears, <laughs> they lost. Uh, I think it was Bears plus three. So we had some cushion there, but they lost by six. The Niners, that was a disaster all the way around. Uh, we had them trying to cover eight and a half points, not even close. And then uh, what was our other boo boo? Um, Thursday night was that? Oh, was- yep, you broke. You broke the rule, Corey. You doubly I broke hate- this year's rules. I hate myself. Over. I had the over, <laughs> and it, and again, oh, that was for mortgage. That was for mortgage. Oh, it was uh, Atlanta. Atlanta pooped the bed against the commanders they didn't cover either they lost that by eight so it started off very poorly for us Um, it did and then and then everything slowly became okay dude those unders were hitting like 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 skittles baby like (laughs) i you know (laughs) i was gonna say something else but i'll say skittles you know the patriots and raiders god bless them we knew they weren't gonna score points eagles jets such a weird game but that was under where it needed to be and then how about the Cowboys? How about the Cowboys? <laughs> they covered. That was a good pick by you. Um, but I did beat you again. I was two and one. I, yeah. think, I, I think I'm two and one the last three weeks. Yeah, you're 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 where we would love to be. Like if you and I could both just go two and one every week, it would suck because we'd hit our six team or we'd miss our six team parlay. But people be making hand over fist money with us. They would be now. Then you go to the mortgage bets that I've been that I made. I just I can't get two in a row, man. And this week was bad. You know, lost Thursday night, and then the Seahawks Bengals just put up no points. Um, you know, so that was depressing. The the two games I picked the overs on, I lost on. The two games I picked the unders, we hit. So uh, I think you're gonna sense a trend, at least on my side, going in to week seven. Well, you will not sense that same trend from me as I have been burnt. <laughs> Very badly recently. I feel better about matchups in week seven. I think we've seen some realities of some teams that are on the up and we're going to get some good value from Vegas on some of those things. So that's where that's where I'm going to start this week. If if you're okay to go ahead and jump into week seven. I'm ready, baby. Let's roll. Let's get to week seven. All right. Let's get this parlay, Jared. Let's get it. Let's get it. Well, I'm I'm just going to be honest with you because I feel like that's what our relationship is built upon. It's built upon honesty. I want to go to Thursday. I want to take Jacksonville plus oh 1.5 points, oh but I'm not going to, but I'm not going to. We have, I don't know the last time we hit a Thursday bet, so I'm not going to. Don't do it. We're not doing it. We're a hundred percent not doing it, but okay. let me tell you where we are going. I I'm on, go. the, I'm on the Detroit hype train, Corey. I'm on okay. the Detroit hype train. <laughs> okay. I I I just I just I'm I'm money lining Detroit right now. That's where I'm at. The the Baltimore Ravens, I understand they won their game last week. I believe they're four and two, but they're just not 
They're not putting up points. The defense is doing everything. And the defense is about to get tested this week by a very, very strong Detroit offense. Okay. Now, I'm saying Detroit offense does a little more than Baltimore defense in this matchup. I'm taking Detroit money line straight up, plus 132. Oh, David, plus 132. Okay, you, know, you don't want the three points. I don't want the three points. I think it will be more by that. A push would suck. But right. I'm I'm gonna I'm riding Detroit coming into this matchup. I love that. Okay, okay, I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that. I definitely I didn't I didn't pick that game, but I was looking at it hard because I think you have Detroit that that's playing well. The Ravens are always in the mix, and you know this could be an interesting game. So I okay, let's roll Lions, baby. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Um, okay, my first game requires a clip that we've heard before. But I got to do it. And here we go. Oh, wait. Hold up. It's muted. Give me one second. Give me one. Listen, my, my, my producer's not here. Hold up. <laughs> okay. I got it. He got two. He got two. Get the mailman. He got two. I get the Jets are plus two. Give me the New York Jets at home against the Commanders. I, I'm not a commander's believer. Sam Howell, flippy floppy. Uh, give me the two. The mailman, he's got two. The Giants played well Sunday night. They, they, or uh, was that Monday? No, Sunday night. Sunday yeah. night. Yep. Yeah. Against the Bills. I think they go into this game. I think they have momentum. Saquon Barkley, he's back. I think he brings stability to the Giants. I take, give me Giants plus two at home in the Meadowlands. I don't believe in the commanders, Jared. I I, I think they're wishy-washy. One week, they look like they can play well. The next week, Sam Howell has minus 6. 6 points in fantasy, and I lose. So I just am not a believer. Give me Giants plus two. I love that. I don't believe in Sam Howell either, and I agree with you. It, the Giants did play. I know they lost, but they, they played a good game. That defense looked like, you know, the – the defenses that stomped out Tom Brady back in the day and won some Super Bowls. They were looking strong. They were. Uh, yeah. I'm, taking us, I'm taking us out to my home state, okay. Colorado. Oh. And I, I think I must have some dead pixels in my computer because I believe this line says Green Bay minus one and a half. And that just – that must it must be like a fudged seven – or something because the Broncos are trash. And I, I saw this really interesting graphic this week that made me feel a little bit different. It was comparing the stats of Patrick Mahomes and the five and one Chiefs to the one in five Broncos. And they were very comparable, Russell Wilson to Mahomes. Like he's not having a bad season statistically, but that defense is just miserable. And Sean Payton plus Russell Wilson does not equal any type of continuity or success. So <laughs> Packers minus 1.5 points, Oof. easy money. Love easy it. money in Denver. Uh, I love that so much. Um, I, I I mean, I had it. I had it picked right here. I was going to be my next one. I, I feel really good about it. This is, I feel good with these first three. I am like, that to me, it was, it was a smudge line. I, like the one and a half, minus one and a half. Yeah. The Denver Broncos, it, it, it's a fire sale over there in Denver. I mean, <laughs> this is the fact that they're plus one and a half. Like th that, I don't know if that's because John Elway is still in the building. Like, why are they getting respect? Uh, it's John Lynch watching from the <laughs> from the stands. And, it's, oh, oh my Johnny gosh! Lynch. All right, okay. My next game. I need a little help. Just like a young man coming in for a quickie, I feel so unsatisfied. So I feel it. so unsatisfied by this game. <laughs> Raiders at the Bears. This game has no business being played. <laughs> Under 37 and a half. Like a young man coming in for a quickie. This game will be over very quickly. No Justin Fields. I, I don't, I, the backup for the Bears, I can't even pronounce the name. Uh, Garoppolo got sent to the hospital. They have a backup quarterback playing. I, this is going to be a disaster. The Raiders, 
barely got over 20 points for the first time last week because of a joke safety that they got against uh, the Patriots. And I don't think the Bears are putting up anything more than 13 points like they did last week. So I know 37 and a half, Jared, is very, very low. But this game will be disgusting. And like a young man coming in for the quickie, this game will be very over very quickly because it's a low-scoring game. Give me under 37 and a half. Raiders at Bears. I like that. I like that a lot. This last one, I I debated for a while. And l- allow me to explain myself. I, I, I love the Dolphins. I would love to go into that game and take a money line away win game. But I just don't think you screw with the Eagles or the Niners this week after they got exposed which is honestly what happened. And I think this was a week of a coming to Jesus, as we say here in the South. (laughs) And I don't, I wouldn't want to be Minnesota or Miami on Sunday or Monday night. Like, I just think those games are going to be ugly, just brutal. Like remember the Titans, that game where they just run those teams into the ground and run up the score on them type of game. So I'm I'm gonna stay away from from those. If you want to get wild, I could see you in my mind. I'm like, oh yeah, Corey's gonna go Miami, Philly, take the over, tease down the over. That feels like a mortgage bet to me. I don't know if it is. Uh, I'm going. I, to... I, I'm avoiding. I'm not gonna lie. I, I I'll tip my hand right now. I'm not I'm not touching them. I don't I don't like them either. That's I fair. Like no no, don't feel good about them. That's fair. I'm I'm actually gonna go to uh, I I know how you feel. I talk about this coach all the time because it's the man that I would run into a minefield for. I'm going back to the Steelers. <laughs> okay, and it just feels like they're this this ragtag team that doesn't do anything super well except win. Mm. Like D- Tomlin is just gonna get them there. Like <clears throat> second year quarterback. They've got Johnson coming back off the, off the IR this week, so they've got some more firepower on offense. That defense is playing well. I understand the Rams are playing well, too. This game is in Los Angeles. But I'm taking the Steelers plus the points here. I'm tempted to take money line, but I think yeah. this game could come down to a field goal or something close, and I just want a little bit of insurance there. Oh, I like that. Okay, okay. So Steelers plus three here. That's it. Okay, I love that. I love that. I think um, I don't know what the Rams are right now. Uh, I know they have a bunch of receivers that run around. They have Stafford that throws the ball. Uh, I know Kyron Williams got hurt, so I don't even they're 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 running a backup out there. I I'm not sure what the Rams are. They were supposed to be the worst team. I, I thought they would be like one in sixteen this year. They're so, playing, man. They're they're playing. Um, but I, I'm with you. I I I mean. The Steelers are going to be this team that goes back and forth all year. And 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 I do believe we'll finish eight and nine. They're going to finish under 500. But they will they will be right where the Tomlin zone is, where the man just doesn't have losing seasons. So. He doesn't. He doesn't. So they're just, it's just gritty. I like it. I just gritty, gritty team. Yeah. All right. You ready for the final pick here? I'm ready. What's going to bring us home for 6-0? I love it. Let's go. All right. I got something for you, but you just got to let this kit clip breathe, okay? It, it, it may feel a little long, but it's a goodie, okay? So just let, let it do its thing. Let it do its thing. We're going to stick together. You know why? Because we are ducks, and ducks fly together. That's right, Jan. And just when you think they're about to break apart, ducks, ducks fly, fly together. together. And when the wind blows hard and the sky is black, ducks fly together. And when the roosters are crowing and the cows are spinning circles in the pasture? <laughs> okay. And when everyone says it can't be done, ducks fly together. Now, new ducks and old ducks must unite under a new banner. And I thought perhaps something like this. <laughs> something like this, Jan. Old ducks. And new ducks. You have the old regime of the New England Patriots, Jared. They're the old ducks. They've been around a long time. Belichick's old. And we got the new ducks. We got Josh Allen. 
We got the Bills. They're hungry. They're playing well. The new Ducks. We're uniting under one banner of under 41 and a half points. Oh. The Bills may score 41 points. The Patriots will score zero. The, the Bills defense, they, they do have some injuries. Okay, I'm not going to lie. But the Patriots do as well. But the Patriots are not going to score. And the Bills will get up probably 27 nothing and put the brakes on this thing. Mac Jones, as long as Mac Jones is playing NFL football for the Patriots, they won't score more than 13 points, Jerry. They just won't. Like, they, they, they are incapable of scoring. And I don't think this game becomes a shootout at New England with the Bills traveling there. So give me this, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're united together. We're, we're changing our uniforms and we're going to finish this thing six and zero oh with the parlay hit. Let's go baby. Under 41 and a half. No, oh, I like that. Listen, you could have said anything after that clip and I would have jumped off a cliff with you playing on my emotions over here with my favorite movie of all time. Love it. Love it. All right. Just to, just to recap, uh, what we're saying, uh, we're staying away from our Thursday games as Corey and I have a track record of absolutely taking a dump when it comes to <laughs> any type of Thursday game. So we're going to start off at our noon game. Giants, he got two. We're taking the Giants <laughs> plus two. The Ducks are flying together in New England. I agree. The Bills played down to their opponents this season. They still have a winning record. I don't know how. Under 41 and a half. Raiders at Bears feels like a minor league or a CFL game where everybody is injured. 37 and a half is low, but it's probably not low enough. I'd love the under here. Detroit is my hot team right now in the NFC. Baltimore's four and two. I don't think it matters. Detroit money line, get some odds, get some plus 132 in our favor. Never sleep on Tomlin, Corey. Never. Mm. Pittsburgh going into L.A. The weather won't matter. It's always shunning out in California. Take the Steelers plus the points. Expect a close one. And Green Bay, the fudge line of the week. No idea why anybody should be favored minus one and a half going into Denver unless they're playing on their knees. Take the Packers coming off of a bye week minus one and a half in Green Bay. Your your fantasy team with Love and Dobbs, I mean, you might score 195 points. I know. You're telling me I've got better options this week, but it doesn't matter. Like, the Denver Broncos, I think, are playing kindergartners in their secondary. <laughs> they got the little kids out there. Put the pads on. Put the pads on. Oh, oh my man. gosh. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm curious now where the mortgage is because I'm interested – I, they're, the rest of these games, I know the Seahawks are still on the board. You love to get you some Seahawks. They did you dirty last week. But where are you finding value where we're going to get pay our mortgage after the the disaster that was last week? Uh, the disaster that that's the, the that was last week. There there are two games that I like here. We're gonna we're gonna mix this up a little bit. Uh, one of them we're gonna go under, and the other one we're gonna pick the spread line. Um, but uh, Scotty Wynn, I need you to bring us in, baby. <laughs> Hold on. You call gonna be all over, baby. <laughs> you call. You call us all over, baby. You you call, you call us all over, baby. Uh, shout out to World Series of Poker, nineteen ninety eight. Uh, Scotty Wynn, you call us all over, baby. You you ride with me here. It's all over, baby. You you pay your mortgage and you're good. Give me under. Falcons at Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, Ritter, Ritter is not – I don't think he's an NFL-level quarterback. He's shown flashes, but on the road, his home record was astounding. That was his first home loss, Jared, last week. Wow. College or NFL. College or NFL, first home loss. On the road, different story. They're at Tampa. You've been there. You've been oh, I love going out to – I mean, it's, I wonder if it's a still – what's the name of that stadium right now? I think it's had a couple of different names. It has, like – it's it's like – it's called, like, Floyd Casey. Or, like, that's the Baylor – old Baylor one. But, like, isn't there, like, two names? It's, like, two first names. I, I think it – I can't – Raymond James. I think it's still Raymond, Raymond James. James. I think it's still Raymond James. But, yeah, I've been there many a time. Uh, seen a lot of bowl games there. Seen a lot of Tampa Bay games there. I've got a good family that took us out to football when we were young. Well, Jerry, they're not going to be shooting that pirate ship off very often in this game. It's going to be low scoring. 38 and a half is where it's set. 
We're going to tease that four and a half points. We get it at 43 points now. Under 43 points. No way this doesn't hit. I, I, no way. And then, of course, you're right. Why do we have to do it? Right? We have to go to Seattle, <laughs> of course. Like, it, 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 that was a debacle of a game. We should have we should have won it four different ways last week against the Bengals. Super, super upsetting. Um, on the road at Cincinnati, we're back. We go back to Seattle against the lowly Cardinals, who have had one good game all year. We're minus seven and a half. Seahawks are minus seven and a half. We get it down to minus three. Just win by a field goal, and we're good. I like that. This is a, you know, NFL, it's a – one week you're down, one week you're up. One week you're down, one week you're up. Seahawks were down last week. I think Gino and the boys come out and they put up points. Defense is playing better uh, right now. Give me Seahawks minus three. So your mortgage bet, you're teasing four and a half points. We're getting under 43 points, Atlanta at Tampa. And then minus three, Seattle over the Cardinals for your mortgage bet for the week. That's dope. <clears throat> That's dope. That's dope. I love it. I'm all about it. Well, lock those in. Lock those in. We. (laughs) You call us all over, baby. You call us all over, baby. (laughs) You call, man. I love it. Well, let's let's look at what we're looking at, uh, real quick. Right now, our six leg parlay. Uh, you know, we always put ten dollars on it. Ten dollars is gonna win you five hundred and sixty four dollars this week. Um, That's a juicy. That's a juicy one. That's juicy one with taking the money line, Detroit going into Baltimore. So there's a little little extra change for you this week, but Mm -hmm. be be sure to lock those bets in. Again, we are nearing not quite there yet, but we're nearing that midway point. Teams are getting their bye weeks in, and this is the time we started off hot. We cooled down a little bit in past weeks. We're leveling off another bit, but these feel like the weeks listeners where there is some value take advantage of these middle weeks because when we get to the end of the season people sit and stuff it gets weird come those last three weeks Mm -hmm. it does get weird but right now we're in mid-season form and i know we had the last two weeks weren't great but now we're, we're in our sweet spot here so i expect big things from us this week big things and we should be up because we won't be betting Turkey Day in November like we did last year. And statistically, we should be better off, way better off. We were going to be way better off, you know. But we'll see. I mean, maybe we get there. Maybe we just do one. Maybe we just bet one. One Turkey Day game. Don't, no. Listen, you know, no. Just one. No. no. Next week, get ready. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some clips of my own next week. I've oh, been you gonna have some clips? I'm gonna oh. have some clips. I'm gonna have some clips next week. You better be ready. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready, Jared. I'm so, ready. I'm just worried. I think mine might get more and more obscure. It's where you're like, uh, uh, oh, you're okay. Gonna over, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you call gonna be all over. All right. Baby. As we close out, Corey, <laughs> trivia, trivia question for you. In that matchup, who is Mr. Win up against? Oh man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No idea. It's some unknown. It's some unknown player. Like he, um, he made it in from like a, a satellite, like a like a like a entry tournament, and got his entry that way. He's like an unknown dude. I I don't know his name. The name we're looking for is Kevin McBride. Kevin, Kevin McBride. McBride. Do you know what hand he won with? It, what hand? Kevin McBride hand won. No, no, no. Scotty. What, what, what? Scotty's house? Uh, it, it was full house. It was he, he had he had nines with something. Nines with eights or nines, nines with, with eights. eights. That's right. That's good. That's good memory. Because he he had the third nine in his hand, and McBride had eights full of nines. So like he was playing the board. He thought Scotty was bluffing on that. And Dirty. Clearly, wasn't. you call us over, babe. There's an interview of him saying. He 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 called it because Scotty said that. He thought oh. he was bluffing it because Scotty said that. Because he said got baited in. Got baited in, man. But that guy still won like six hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, he ain't. It's sad he ain't got the trophy and the bracelet, but he doing all right. Except yeah. I, the way these poker guys bet, it's just yeah. water. It's just water to them. But it's not even money. Like it, it's not money how you and I think of money. It it's just the 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 chip the 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 game piece that allows you to, to, to go at it. So, but the next year, man, it blew up. I mean, that was the 
Chris Moneymaker year, and um, it, it, poker got wild after that. So, and here we are, and here we are now. Maybe Texas one day will let you gamble online. Who knows? Uh, one day uh, I'll be on my deathbed, and they'll finally pass that legislation. I'll get to make one bet. <laughs> one bet. <laughs> well, be sure, be sure to follow us uh, on all of your podcast platforms. You can find us there. Send us a review. Shout us out on social media at Benjamin Betts. We would love to hear from you. And we will catch you guys next week for some NFL. Uh huh. Yeah. It's all about the Benjamins, baby. This has been a Rogue Media Network production. I married a guy I knew most of my life. We knew each other in high school and even went to prom together. But little did I know, I did not know him at all. I will call my now ex-husband, Dirty Chad. Hey y'all, this is April. And this is Caroline. With Bloody Happy Hour. And we are bringing to you Dirty Chad. Get it on patreon.com slash bloody happy hour exclusively for all the details and all the red flags. Caroline's finally telling her story. My truth. Hi, I'm Hank. You might remember me from a show called King of the Hill. Check out Ma, a King of the Hill rewatch podcast. These boys ain't right, but they are funny. Find the Ma podcast anywhere you get your podcasts or at roguemedianetwork.com. I tell you what. <laughs> hmm.